Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. We begin tonight with the latest out of Haiti as we continue to keep an eye on rescue efforts there following a severe earthquake. Tonight we can report at least 304 people are dead and a number of those injured is in the thousands. This is Tropical Storm Grace now threatens recovery efforts. We'll have a full report coming up in just a bit, but first. It has been more than a month and San Antonio police are still searching for the person who stabbed a young street pastor on the northwest side. Yeah, police were originally called to the scene after someone reported 22 year old Troy Demetrius Lee had been shot, but soon learned it was not a shooting. Now, I spoke with his mother for the first time during a tribute ceremony this afternoon. She tells me how she's been able to make peace with her son's death. He said he wanted to master love and forgiveness. And I told him, well, if that's what you wanted to do, you've already did all that. Nyla Roberts is the mother of 22-year-old Troy Demetrius Lee. She said that her son is no longer on this earth, but she has peace knowing the many lives he impacted as a street pastor. Um, it's perfectly fine to be optimistic and to have high hopes, but we have to be prepared for both outcomes. The people that he was out there reaching, Troy, you know, we were we were those ones that were lost, gang banging, in and out of prison, selling drugs. Lee's mother says because he had insomnia, he would get up in the late hours of the night to preach the gospel. He would go downtown and would be there until the buses start running because he wanted to reach people and tell them about Jesus. And it was downtown where Lee was killed on June 28th. San Antonio police found him with multiple stab wounds around 2 a.m. in the 6100 block of Ingram Road, right in front of the Hilltop Oaks apartments where he lived. Lee later died at the hospital. You know, I lost, like, you know, a best friend to me. It really crushed me. That we need to love one another, Father. Yes, that we Lord. need to learn to forgive one yes, another, Lord. Father. Joined in prayer this afternoon, Lee's family and friends gathered at his apartment for a special tribute ceremony. Very smart, really kind, peaceful. He and his girlfriend, Lindell Batiste, have a six-year-old together and a baby that is due any day now. As for his mom, Robert says she forgives the suspect still at large. I will see my child again, regardless if this person turns herself in, if they're caught. The Lord will deal with them. A Crime Stoppers reward is still up for the arrest of the person responsible for Lee's death. If you have any information, you're urged to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And remember, you can remain anonymous. One week ago today, a suspected drunk driver going the wrong way cut the lives of two young women short when he crashed into them head on. Tonight, with heavy hearts, their loved ones gathered to celebrate their lives. The night team's John Paul Barajas reports. Family, friends, and former classmates of Daniela Lute and Diana Rubio filled the entire pavilion at Friedrich Park to remember the lives that were taken from them way too soon. I hear a voice say, Hi, I'm Daniela. I met with the kind brown eyes, filled with excitement, a wide smile with a gap in between her two front teeth. <laughs> that just filled your heart with joy. Courtney, who's known Daniela since she was four, has 21 years of memories and had plans to make many more. Like having her as my maid of honor or godmother to my children. With that no longer a possibility, loved ones shared their favorite moments of the girls. New memories no longer possible, but old unheard stories hopefully adding to a list of cherished moments. Both girls hugged you and loved you like they've known you forever. And that's an amazing feeling to, to run into. Cassandra Martinez, a former classmate, made shirts for tonight's celebration of life with hopes of any profits being donated to the Mothers Against Drunk Driving organization. And as the mic made its way to Daniela's dad, he opened up about how difficult it was to discipline his little girl. I mean, she's terrified. You can see her eyes. She's terrified because she thinks she's going to get a spanking. And she says, third and third. <laughs> and I said, get out of my sight, get away from me. <laughs> but through all the tears, laughter, and countless stories, the families wanted one thing to stick with everyone more than anything. No way would I ask anyone to stop drinking. I just beg you to make a plan. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News.
Other top stories today. She was run over and died just feet away from her north side apartment overnight. It happened in the parking lot of the Montecito Apartments off Deerwood Drive near Austin Highway. Police say 68 year old Kyle McWilliams had parked his vehicle and dropped off 70 year old Carolyn Bullard after meeting up for drinks. When officers arrived around 1015, they say they found Bullard lying dead on the ground. Officers tell us it appears McWilliams was backing out of the parking space when he struck Bullard. He was taken into custody for DWI and is facing a charge of intoxication manslaughter. At last check, a 10 year old girl was in critical condition following a T-bone crash on the far south side this afternoon. It all happened just after 2 p.m. on Highway 281 near Del Lago Parkway. Police tell us a vehicle was turning when it was hit by a pickup. Four people were inside that vehicle that was hit, including the 10 year old. We're told she suffered a severe injury to her leg. Three people were inside the pickup, but only one was taken to the hospital. So far, no word on any charges in this case. A back to school event was held in honor of six year old who was gunned down on Mother's Day during a car meet. Soraya Pettis' organization, Soraya Liana's Blessings nonprofit, held the back to school event at the People's House Church on Hamilton Street. There, families enjoyed food, music, a bounce house, and even a mechanical bull. Volunteers also gave out free haircuts. There were also at least 600 backpacks filled with supplies and a little note made out to the other kids as they entered this school year. I love each and every one of y'all sincerely. Your guardian angel, Soraya. And these words are words that will hit anybody. As you can tell, it always hits me, always hits me. Soraya's grandmother hopes her organization raises awareness against gun violence against children. Andrew Elizondo, the man arrested in this case, is still in the Bear County Jail. He's facing a felony murder charge and is facing up to 99 years to life in prison. Turning now to coronavirus and the latest numbers for Bear County. As of yesterday, the seven day average of COVID-19 infections was at 1,391. And in our hospitals, 1,299 with 30, 333 in the ICU and 214 on ventilators. Meanwhile, a third shot of either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine has now been authorized for patients who are immunocompromised. The decision by the CDC coming as cases of COVID-19 continues to surge across the country and hospitals are feeling the strain. Meanwhile, as children return to school, the debate over masks continues. Here's ABC's Zareen Shaw with the details. Amid the growing concern over breakthrough infections as the Delta variant spreads across the country, the CDC is recommending a third dose of either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine for a small group of immunocompromised Americans to help them better fight the virus. The ACIP is continuing to discuss and deliberate um, the emerging issues with regard to duration of immunity as different variants emerge. CVS and Walgreens now ready to begin in administering these third shots with proof. But boosters are not yet recommended for the general population. As soon as we find out that we will need to have to boost, uh, booster people, we're going to be ready to do it right away. The CDC's decision comes as hospitals are struggling to keep up with the growing number of patients. Louisiana seeing its highest number of hospitalizations since the beginning of the pandemic. We're in a bad place, and that's why we have to slow transmission and increase vaccinations. A similar situation in Texas. Wake up, get a clue. It is not like the flu. It is devastating our health care system. Alabama's Governor Kay Ivey has issued a limited state of emergency to help support frontline workers. It's very frustrating. Many of us feel, myself included, that this didn't have to happen with the vaccine available. And so that um, that makes it hard. In Mississippi, officials say a majority of those hospitalized are unvaccinated. We've lost four healthy people in their 20s, two of whom were pregnant, zero vaccinated. Meanwhile, as children return to school, the debate over masks rages on. Parents should have the right to govern their own children. I'd much rather my child breathe through a mask than through a ventilator. Despite bans on mask mandates by the governors of Florida and Texas, several school districts are defying those orders, requiring masks for students and teachers. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. Outside with live cam, hope your weekend got off to a great start today. A pretty view of downtown San Antonio. We've got a few lingering clouds out there and even a couple of showers and storms 
up in the hill country, uh, but we will see a higher chance of rain as we get into your Sunday afternoon. First, today's almanac 75, our morning low, a nice 20 degree jump up to our afternoon high of 95, and we should actually be a few degrees cooler than that tomorrow, uh, and that'll come because of a higher chance of rain. We're looking at scattered afternoon and evening thunderstorms on Sunday. I'll walk you through future cast, let you know what to expect for the rest of the weekend coming up in just a bit. Tim. Thank you, Katie. Rescue efforts continuing tonight in Haiti after that 7.2 magnitude earthquake struck the island nation early this morning, and now a new threat is on the horizon there. The latest on all of it when the night beat continues. At least 304 people are dead tonight and approximately 1,800 injured after a powerful earthquake rocked Haiti this morning, the epicenter in the southwestern portion of the island. Numerous buildings have collapsed and residents are buried under the rubble. Here's ABC's Faith Abube with the details. Haiti in a state of emergency after a powerful earthquake rocked the country Saturday morning. The 7.2 magnitude quake was followed by a series of aftershocks. The tremors felt as far away as Cuba and Jamaica. A tsunami warning was issued initially but was lifted a short time later. The U.S. Geological Survey reporting the epicenter was 78 miles west of Port-au-Prince. Images from the town of Le Caille, a coastal town in the south, showed a church badly damaged, a crack running through the center. Major devastation also reported in the town of Jeremy, not far from the epicenter. This disaster coming on the heels of last month's assassination of President Jovenel Moïse. The country's Prime Minister, Ariel Henry, already declaring a state of emergency. Government officials, relief agencies, and representatives from the United Nations are assessing the damage. President Biden has authorized an immediate U.S. response, naming Samantha Power, the U.S. aid administrator, to coordinate the effort. And now Haiti is facing the threat of yet another natural disaster as Tropical Storm Grace heads towards the island. There are concerns Haiti could be facing the same level of devastation seen after an earthquake shattered the country 11 years ago, killing more than 200,000. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Turn it to weather right now. Of course, it is hot outside, but we got some activity going on in our atmosphere right now, huh, Katie? Yes, we're going to have a better chance of rain, especially tomorrow afternoon and evening. So if you do have outdoor plans on Sunday, you'll want to keep a close eye on the weather. And we're going to talk all about our local forecast. But I do want to start giving you a quick view of what we've got going on with the tropics. That does include Tropical Storm Grace. Uh, don't forget about Fred, though. Uh, Fred is very disorganized. In fact, it's fallen apart so much near South Florida that it's technically just a remnant low right now, but it could intensify back to tropical storm status tomorrow into Monday here in the eastern Gulf of Mexico and could make landfall somewhere along the Mississippi, Alabama, Florida Gulf Coast as a tropical storm as we get into Monday. Hot on its heels, tropical storm Grace working into the Caribbean now, and unfortunately this could hinder the cleanup efforts there in Haiti. We do hate to see that for those folks. It is expected to continue as we get into Tuesday, uh, riding along Cuba there, eventually working into the eastern Gulf of Mexico so Wednesday, Thursday of next week. So still several days to watch Tropical Storm Grace as it gets into the Gulf. Where does it go from there? Still too soon to tell. So this is a system that we'll be keeping a close eye on for you. And of course, we'll be updating you in all of our weather casts here on KSAT 12. Back here at home, 85, reading mostly cloudy. I do think we have mainly just some high level clouds out there for the most part. Dew point is in the low 70s here. So it feels like 89 winds are on the light side. It's 82 in Kerrville, 79 in Fredericksburg and 77 in Rock Springs. That's where we've had uh, a little bit of rain activity late this evening. A uh, view of satellite and radar does show some additional cloud cover generally north of San Antonio and Highway 90. But a feature here that I want to point out is this green line that's between Austin and San Marcos, south of Blanco, south of Kerrville. This is an outflow boundary that originated from storms earlier in the day in central and north Texas. It's made it all the way down to our part of the state here, uh, and it's mainly helping to kickstart some additional shower and non severe thunderstorm activity across portions of the hill country. So in western Kerr County, even into Edwards County, we've got just a few spotty showers and a few non severe storms. We've got a few lightning strikes showing up here, uh, but this is definitely not a big deal at all. Just producing some rumbles of thunder and some spotty rain in spots. We'll have to see what that outflow boundary can do over the next several hours. It should really continue uh, to fizzle out here as we get uh, past midnight tonight. 
Just want to show the big picture. There's been a lot more rain in central and north Texas today. Complex of storms there brought that outflow boundary down to us, and it's that energy that's going to kind of kickstart or regenerate storms by tomorrow afternoon. Future cast doing a pretty good job of things at this hour. Not quite as much activity on radar right now as it paints east of 35, uh, but for the next couple of hours, especially in the hill country, a spotty shower or non severe storm will be possible, but for the most part, Weather will be very quiet overnight through early on Sunday morning, mainly just warm and muggy. As we get closer to lunchtime tomorrow, that's when uh, across portions of the hill country north of Highway 90, that's where we could see the beginnings of tomorrow shower and thunderstorm activity. As anything develops tomorrow afternoon, it is expected to slowly drop south. So by late tomorrow afternoon along the Highway 90 corridor here in San Antonio, that's where we could see some scattered showers and storms with activity continuing to push south into late Sunday evening. Uh, and then we'll have another scattering of some rain as we get into the heat of the day on Monday. Overall severe weather threat tomorrow is really, really low, but I certainly can't rule out some flashes of lightning, some gusty winds and maybe a few spotty flooding issues because any rain that falls could be quite heavy. So keep an eye out for some clouds like this tomorrow afternoon, some cumulonimbus, aka thunderstorm clouds, scattering of rain tomorrow during the afternoon and evening hours, and then another chance to add some hit or miss downpours into Monday. Definitely nice. need to keep that Weather Authority app handy, huh, yes, Haiti? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh huh. All right, Andrew, with the Cowboys having uh, two preseason games under their belt, they definitely know where they need to make some tweaks. Yeah, the, the biggest thing being the defense right now, it, it, aside from the injuries, we need to obviously get healthy. But at this point, Dallas needs to focus on defense. It was one of the biggest places of need, excuse me, heading into this season. And there were some signs of progress, but obviously a long way to go. When we come back more on the state of the Cowboys D, plus UTSA's first scrimmage is in the books. Got that for you next. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Head coach Mike McCarthy was not pleased with the way the Cowboys practiced this week, and in some ways that showed up in last night's 19-16 loss to the Arizona Cardinals. Dallas's three quarterbacks combined to complete only 20 passes for 215 yards, while the defense allowed Arizona to rack up 168 rushing yards. To make matters worse, the injury bug did strike. Starting defensive tackle Neville Gallimore left the game with a dislocated elbow and will reportedly be out four to six weeks. But even with all of that in mind, there were plenty of positive signs. Rome wasn't built in a day, and Dallas's new look defense certainly won't be either. So far, it's, it's going well. We're starting to get a feel for everything, get a feel for the defense, the scheme. Uh, we call it uh, system expertise, and we're working on it, and, and we're building on that. We're maturing, I, I think I would say. Um, you know, we have a lot of new faces in there, so, I mean, this is what we need. You know, we need we need. We need training camp. We need just to continue to work. Um, this wasn't our best week, you know, leading into this game. So uh, we need to come out of this. We just got to rally, get healthy, and we need to have a better week of practice going into Houston. Cowboys will host the Texans next Saturday at 7 p.m. Houston is in Green Bay tonight, opening their preseason slate against the Packers. The Texans won in convincing fashion 26 to 7. We'll have those highlights coming up later this hour. San Antonio native Kellen Mond saw his first action this preseason as the second quarterback on the Vikings depth chart against the Broncos. Mond completed six passes for 53 yards and a little over one half of work. He also rushed for 25 yards, but Minnesota was kept out of the end zone in a 33 to 6 loss. There's still plenty for UTSA to sort out as they inch closer to the start of the regular season. Specifically, who's going to wear those single-digit jerseys? That tradition began last year in Jeff Trailer's first season as head coach. Players vote to determine who will wear numbers 0 through 9, and the top three vote-getters earn the 210 numbers representing San Antonio's area code. It's a big step in earning respect as performing well at the team's scrimmages. Roadrunners held their first scrimmage this afternoon. What did Trailer think was the most important thing he wanted to see? I'm looking forward to some live tackling. I'll be I'll be throwing up over there, so nervous somebody's going to get injured. Uh, but we need to do it. You know, we need to go to the ground, and my receivers need to you know get used to take care of the football to the ground and running backs and all that. But just that, just the live tackling piece of it. Roadrunners will hold one more scrimmage next Saturday, August 21st, before voting on who wears which jerseys. It has only been four months since the last time UIW was on a football field against live competition. They played a six-game slate in the spring instead of a full season last fall. Still a freshman quarterback, Cameron Ward lit up the stat sheet, throwing for 24 touchdowns and just four interceptions. And now, even as a, still a freshman, he can't wait to get this season underway. 
Well, I'm excited uh, for this year. Last year I had a, a lot of mistakes that I made. Uh, I learned from them. Me and my quarterback coach, Coach Leftwich, were working every day in the film room, uh, watching the practice film from even from uh, last year and after this practice. So just working every day to get to our uh, try to win the conference championship and uh, make a deep run in the playoffs. UIW opens their season on September 2nd against Youngstown State. Top news for soccer fans today. The USL announced that today's match between SAFC and the New York Red Bulls 2 has been postponed due to positive COVID-19 tests among multiple individuals associated with the San Antonio squad. No further information or even a makeup date has been released at this time. Special weekend though on the racetrack. IndyCar hosting the first, excuse me, the first of three races alongside NASCAR in Indianapolis this afternoon. It's the Big Machine Spiked Coolers Grand Prix. San Antonio resident Pato Award earned the pole position. He led for 16 laps before finishing fifth, but Will Power was just too good. He led for 56 laps and gets the checkered flag. Coming up later in sports, it's preseason tournament time for high school volleyball. I got highlights from McCollum and a lot more. Tim? We'll look forward to that. When you uh, were mentioning the NASCAR and the Indy cars, I thought they were racing together. <laughs> Video did not indicate that. Yeah, it'd be a little bit more entertaining if that was the case. It would. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. Coming up on the night, be President Biden authorizing the deployment of thousands of U.S. troops to Afghanistan to help with the military withdrawal as the Taliban move to further control the nation. The Taliban now controls more than half of the provinces in Afghanistan. The country's president refusing to resign even as the nation crumbles. Yeah, president Biden now announcing more U.S. troops are being sent in to help with the evacuation of Americans still in Afghanistan and Afghan citizens who helped the West and are desperate to get out. Here's ABC's Christine Sloan with all the details. As the Taliban draw closer to Kabul, President Biden saying there will now be 5,000 troops there. That's an additional 1,000 troops to help with the extraction of Americans and Afghan visa applicants. The Afghan military is patrolling the streets in Kabul as the State Department begins moving personnel to the airport to help with the evacuation. Thousands of Afghans who risked their lives to help the West now desperate for a way out. We serve for the U.S. and I serve forces, for the coalition forces. They have to take care about us. It is our turn to be helped. President Biden warning the Taliban that any action taken against U.S. personnel during the evacuation will be met with a swift and strong response. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani resisting calls to resign. His government posting this video overnight, which had claimed show airstrikes on militants in Balkh province. One of the cities there, Mazari Shari, falling to the Taliban on Saturday. It's the country's fourth largest city. The Taliban now control more than half of the country's provinces, posting this video that appears to show Afghan military aircraft now in their possession. The Pentagon hopes to keep the country from once again becoming a haven for terrorists, as it was before 9-11. We're going to make sure that a, a terrorist threat can't emanate from Afghanistan again by maintaining robust over-the-horizon counterterrorism capabilities in the region. President Biden doubling down on his decision to draw down the U.S. presence, saying he is the fourth U.S. president to preside over American troops in Afghanistan, and he will not pass the war on to a fifth. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Meanwhile, a federal judge here in Texas has ordered the Biden administration to reinstate a Trump era border policy requiring migrants to stay in Mexico until their U.S. immigration court dates. President Biden ended the policy known as remain in Mexico when he took office. In April, Texas, along with the state of Missouri, sued the federal government. Both states claiming reversing the policy led to a surge of migrants at the border, which inflicted costs on their states. A judge ruled late Friday the Biden administration failed to consider several critical factors, including the benefits of the Remain in Mexico policy before ending the program. The judge put his ruling on hold for seven days to allow the administration to appeal. Also happening around America, U.S. Customs and Border Protection officers have seized thousands of counterfeit COVID-19 vaccination cards in Memphis, Tennessee. Officers say the low-quality counterfeit vaccine cards were blank and featured the CDC logo. They came in packets of 20, 50, and 100 and had numerous typos, unfinished words, and misspelled Spanish words on the back. Authorities say the cards were sent from an area of China, north of Hong Kong, but the Chinese address was likely bogus. The CDC warns fake vaccine cards are on the rise with more employees and colleges requiring people to get the vaccine. And the FBI warns buying or selling counterfeit cards is against the law. 
Former Saturday Night Live cast member Horatio Sanz is accused of uh, is being sued and is accused of sexually assaulting a minor back in 2002. The plaintiff, who was 17 at the time, referred to only as Jane Doe, is also suing NBC and SNL Studios for allegedly enabling the comedian. The lawsuit alleges Sands began grooming the victim when she was just 14. The sexual assault is alleged to have happened at an SNL party. Sands' attorney has called the claims, quote, categorically false. NBC and Lauren Michaels, the creator of uh, SNL, have so far not responded to requests for comment. A state of emergency in Arizona declared an Gila band southwest of the Phoenix today after flash flooding ravaged the valley overnight. The Maricopa County Sheriff's Office says several helicopter rescues and evacuations are still underway. Parts of the area measured more than an inch and a half of rain in the past 24 hours, with the Arizona Department of Transportation saying some roads have been destroyed as a result. And in Las Vegas, four people were hurt there yesterday after a supermarket partially collapsed. You see the video there. The president of the La Bonita supermarket company says about 150 people work at that store and about 50 or 60 were inside at the time. The four that were hurt are expected to be okay. Fire officials say it was a structural deficiency which caused the collapse, but they are still investigating. Nowadays, you can't do much without internet, and sometimes it can come at a high cost. But a new federal program may be able to help. The details next on The Night Beat. Free or more affordable internet. During the past year and a half, we have been more dependent on the internet than ever before. And for families that struggle to pay the bills, well, the internet was a necessity they couldn't afford. Now, thanks to a temporary federal program, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz says millions of Americans now qualify for free or reduced cost internet service. Nowadays, the internet isn't a luxury, it's necessity, especially true for kids thrown into remote learning. Like a lot of school superintendents across the country, Ray Sanchez said he was humbled to find out that 15% of families in his New York district didn't have broadband at home. So that's a significant number when you have 5,100 students. Now there is help because 64% of the families in Sanchez's district qualify for the federal free or reduced price lunch program. That also means means they're eligible for the new emergency broadband benefit program. I anticipate many, many families being able to benefit from uh, what's been offered. The program means a monthly discount of up to $50 off the internet bill. Who else is eligible? Those who lost their job or been furloughed, have an income less than or equal to 135% of the federal poverty line, use programs like SNAP, Medicaid or Lifeline, or now receive a Pell Grant. Those who qualify can also get a one-time discount of up to $100 on a laptop, desktop, or tablet. The first stop is to check the FCC website to see if your internet provider participates. You can apply through your provider or online at getemergencybroadband.org. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Another look outside with live cam for you tonight. Quiet in and around the Alamo City, just warm and muggy out there. We've got a couple of isolated showers and very, very weak storms up in the hill country. We'll take another look at radar in just a couple of minutes, but that's why we've got slightly cooler temperatures to the northwest. 75 in Rock Springs right now and 79 in Fredericksburg. Tomorrow offers a better chance of afternoon and evening showers and storms for more of us, so your rain chances will peak generally after lunchtime on Sunday. We'll walk through future cast once again and I've also got an update on a big climate report that was released this week. All that coming up in just a few minutes. We'll be back. One sure way to get people riled up is to talk about climate change and this week there was a big news story that came out a big report about climate change mm -hmm. and you've got some of the details on it. Yeah, this is a little kind of weekly wrap up here in case you missed it. Some big movers and shakers in the world of weather and climate and Tim is correct. If you didn't enjoy the comment sections on <laughs> COVID related things, you can just hop over to some articles about this. A report issued by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change or the IPCC. They released their sixth assessment report earlier this week. This is a doozy of a report. It's over 3,500 pages, and this is climate and climate change information compiled by 230 scientists around the world. That's a lot of information, but meteorologist Sarah Spivey 
did all the hard work for you. She dug through this report and compiled the five big takeaways from this report. You can read the article that she put together along with some video components right now on KSAT.com. So I encourage you to check that out. Uh, one of the big takeaways uh, from this report was that the increase in global temperature expected um, over the next uh, couple of decades uh, leading to climate change will also lead to more intense weather events, not just here in the United States, but around the world. Um, and this kind of lays out the impacts that we'll be seeing across the country. So I want to point out specifically the central and eastern part of the U.S., that little uh, hurricane icon there. Climate change, the increase in global temperature is expected to produce more powerful hurricanes going forward. And on that note, we do have two tropical systems out in the Atlantic Basin, Fred and Grace. We'll start with talking about Fred. Technically, it's so disorganized that it's just a remnant low, but it is expected to make landfall across parts of the central Gulf Coast as we get into Monday. There will be some heavy rain there, but Fred really won't have much time to strengthen, so any storm surge coastal impacts should be pretty minimal with Fred. Grace, on the other hand, is still much farther out in the Atlantic, starting to move into the Caribbean tonight. It is expected to move over Haiti, the Dominican Republic, eventually Cuba as we get to Wednesday, and then by Thursday of next week, so still several days away, Grace is expected to start to wander into the Gulf of Mexico. Beyond that, movement of this tropical storm is unknown. Unsure of whether it's going to take a curve to the east, very similar to Fred, or if it could take more of a westward turn. So this is a tropical system that we'll be monitoring closely over the next several days. And uh, you can always find the latest on KSAT.com. We've got a dedicated hurricane page there if you want to keep track of what's going on with Grace. Meanwhile, here at home, our forecast, at least in the short term, will be focused on tomorrow's chances of storms. And I mentioned this earlier, but I want to continue to kind of hammer this home. Best chances of rain for most of us tomorrow will be in the afternoon and evening hours where we are expecting a scattering of some showers and storms. High temperatures across the uh, state today were actually a bit lower central and northern part of Texas. High of 91 in Dallas, 85 in Wichita Falls. And there was actually a good amount of rain in the central and northern tier of the state today. That has tried to drop south into our part of the state tonight, but we've lost the heat of the day. So a lot of that activity uh, that was much stronger earlier this afternoon in central and north Texas has really fizzled out. Nonetheless, we've got an outflow boundary that has uh, moved south of Austin now moving into San Marcos. I think this could maybe try to spark a spotty shower as we head into the overnight hours, and it is the reason why we've got a bit of lingering activity in the hill country, uh, but even this activity from Edwards County over to Kerr County is really starting to fizzle out. Just a few rumbles of thunder left. Nonetheless, as that little outflow boundary drifts south tonight, there could be a stray shower here or there, but most of us will be rain free and muggy through early tomorrow. But tomorrow afternoon with that leftover outflow boundary, some upper level energy, we will see some more storms develop likely north of San Antonio in the hill country after lunchtime. Anything that bubbles up there will likely drop south toward the Highway 90 corridor into late Sunday afternoon, early Sunday evening. Uh, and then even this time tomorrow night, as activity continues to fizzle out, we could have some lingering showers and storms. So not everyone is going to see a ton of rain tomorrow, but there will be some scattered showers and storms in the afternoon. The overall severe weather threat is really low, but we will have some flashes of lightning. Some gusty winds will be possible as well. So if you hear thunder and you're out by the pool tomorrow afternoon, just make sure you take everybody inside. We want everyone to be safe. We'll hold on to a scattered rain chance Monday and then peel back rain chances by the middle of next week. Guys. You know, Katie, I'm just impressed that she made it through 3,500 pages. <laughs> she, that is she a lot. Knows what she's, she knows the info she's looking for. Whew, thank you so much, Katie. Uh -huh. <laughs> just like the movie Apocalypse Now taught us to never get off the boat. I've learned never read the Facebook comments. <laughs> yes, no, for sure. Going. Have fun in there. All right, Andrew, a uh, lot of drama in uh, Houston over the offseason regarding their quarterback. They had their first preseason game tonight. How'd they look? Yeah, spe speaking of avoiding Facebook comments, I'm sure they were doing that this <laughs> entire offseason. So the Texans played their first preseason game today, and for as bad as the offseason was, it looked pretty darn good today. When we come back, we'll show you the highlights from their preseason opener in Lambeau, plus... Clemens head coach Jared Johnson talks about the QB change coming up for the Buffaloes. Got that next.
Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. After a tumultuous offseason, head coach David Culley and the Houston Texans finally kick off their preseason at Lambeau Field against the Green Bay Packers tonight. Terod Taylor got the start at QB, and he was solid on his opening drive here. Second and six off play action. Taylor finds Chris Conley downfield for a tiptoe grab along the sidelines. 17 yards there, pulls the ball to midfield, and the drive ends with a 37-yard Kaimi Fairbairn field goal for a 3-0 lead. Taylor was 4 for 4 for 40 yards on his only drive of the game. Houston defense get on, gets in on the fun on the ensuing drive right up the gut. Vincent Taylor out of Madison High School puts pressure on Jordan Love and forces the Aaron throw. The San Antonio native making an impact already. Head to the second quarter now. Texans now down 7 to 3. Davis Mills, the rookie, in at quarterback. Second goal at the five. Handoff goes to Scotty Phillips, and he powers in for the touchdown. Houston leads 10 7. Mills had an up and down game. He finished 11 for 22 for 112 yards, but threw an interception in the red zone late in the second quarter. Houston wins at 26 to 7. Again, they will take on Dallas next Saturday at 7 p.m. This season, KSAT 12 Sports' big game coverage has teamed up with Texas Sports Production to bring you closer to the action with live broadcasts on MeTV and the BGC app, as well as more highlights for our website at BigGameCoverage.com. Our friends at TSP sat down with a number of coaches from the San Antonio area, including Clemens head coach Jared Johnston. The Buffaloes are moving on from longtime starter Max DiDomenico, who graduated and is heading to Army. Instead, they'll look to Bren Prusky to fill those shoes. So what's Johnston's biggest message for Prusky as he prepares for this season? What he's got to understand is he's not Max DiDomenico. And don't try to be Max DiDomenico, right. be Ben Prusky. And uh, the same conversation I had to explain to Max, you know, you're not Frank Harris. <laughs> don't try to be Frank Harris. You know, and, and, and when you have such dynamic quarterbacks, and we, I've been blessed to have two of I consider the best that's come through the city uh, with Max and, and Frank. You know, they, they, watch, they watch the other ones grow and they want to be like them. I mean, <laughs> you finally you got to be yourself. If you want to catch the rest of the 17-minute interview, you can do so right now at BigGameCoverage.com. Time for some high school volleyball. McCollum hosting a 16-team tournament this afternoon. This is the gold bracket here. Cowboys taking on Holmes in the second round. And the visiting squad is keeping pace early. India Gantz spikes one right down the middle. That ties things up. But Cowboys answer right back. Ball kept alive here, and it heads right to Jessa Palmer, and she smokes one right down the line. McCollum rolls on to the championship match with a win, two sets to one. Earlier in the day, great matchup between Harlandale and East Central. Indians up by a set in this one, but the Hornets in control of the second set. Kylie Bennett gets up for the huge block. East Central ties the matchup with a 25-19 set win. So we head to the decisive third, and that's when Harlandale pulls away. Avery Green with the push shot here, just over the block and down. Indians take the set 15 to 11, and the match two sets to one. And finally, early round action between Stevens and Marshall. Rams battling back from a deficit in the second set here. Maya Moreno over to Pamela Lopez here for the hammer. Marshall rallies to take a four-point lead, but the Falcons respond. Isaiah Turner blasts one off the blocker and down to the far corner. Stevens wins this match two sets to one, and they go on to win the entire tournament. One more note tonight, Joshua Franco taking on Andrew Maloney as we speak. We'll have a full recap of that match coming up later tonight. Uh, tomorrow, excuse me. Hopefully yeah, stay here later tonight. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> and it'll be on the website too for sure. Daniel Villanueva is watching it. He'll have a full recap coming up as well. 24-7 news and sports. You Thank got you, it. Andrew. We'll be back after the break. Finally tonight, something good. That's right. More businesses and homeowners than ever before are investing in solar panel systems. Almost half of new electrical capacity came from solar in 2020, and the Solar Energy Energies or Solar Energy Industries Association says the U.S. is expected to deploy three times as much solar capacity over the next decade as was installed by the end of last. Now, if you're looking into solar, the U.S. Department of Energy has debuted a new online tool called Solar App. It's designed to streamline application standardized requirements and in some cases provide instant permit approvals for installations. You know it would be really good if they stopped calling me asking me if I want solar. <laughs> <laughs> Take it tail. <laughs> Afternoon thunder showers will be here to keep you updated tomorrow. Guys. All right, thank you Katie. That's all of our time for tonight. Thanks for watching. Be sure to catch Good Morning San Antonio tomorrow morning starting at 6. Have a good night.